The debate for comparison of AC and DC power has been around for decades since the era called the War of Currents. DC transmission system was the first to be used, however, its use was limited to a few kilometers and over longer distances its use was uneconomical and inefficient because of the I square R losses. A possible solution was to raise the transmission voltage and lower the current to decrease the I square R losses. However, at that time there was no convenient way for lowering the DC voltage. On the other hand, in AC system, the transmission voltages can be increased or decreased efficiently. This quality gave AC system an edge or DC system for transmission or longer distances and is widely used throughout the world. But the recent developments in power electronics have resulted in reconsidering the HVDC transmission system due to its own advantages or HVAC system. Now we evaluate the performance of HVDC and HVAC systems and carry out a fair comparison between the two systems based on different criteria. Number one is construction cost. Overall construction cost of a power system is composed of transmission line cost and terminal station cost. The transmission line cost is determined on the number of conductors used and size of the tower. DC transmission requires two conductors per circuit, whereas AC transmission requires three conductors per three-phase circuit. Also, the supporting towers used in HVDC system are smaller and requires less right-of-way as compared to HVAC towers. So, based on the number of conductors and size of towers, HVDC transmission line will cost lesser than an HVAC transmission line. Terminal station cost Terminal converter station in HVDC are much more expensive than the substation used in HVAC system. The overall cost of transmission is based on the terminal station cost and transmission line cost. The terminal station cost is normally fixed, whereas the transmission line cost increases with the distance. So we can conclude that overall cost of transmission line increases with the distance. For small distances, the overall cost of HVDC transmission system is greater than that of HVAC system. Or a specific distance HVDC system becomes cheaper than HVAC. This distance is called as break-even distance. The break-even distance for overhead transmission line is around 600 km. That's one of the main reasons behind the use of HVDC transmission system for power transmission or very long distances. So, one of the main criteria behind the selection of AC or DC system for power transmission is the distance over which the power needs to be evacuated. Another criteria is the power losses. The main power losses in a transmission line are due to induction, radiation, skin effect, corona effect, ferenti effect, etc. Radiation and induction losses depend on the variation in the magnetic field near the conductor. Due to variant magnetic field, the HVAC conductor radiates some power. Electromagnetic radiation in HVAC conductors results in the production of unwanted current in the nearby conductors resulting in power loss. Since DC has a uniform magnetic field, these losses do not exist in HVDC system. Skin effect and corona losses depend on frequency. These losses exist in HVAC systems. Skin effect does not exist in HVDC system and corona losses in HVDC system are considerably lower as compared to HVAC. Also, the Ferenti effect is absent in HVDC systems. Voltage regulation Due to absence of inductance in DC system, an HVDC line offers better voltage regulation as compared to HVAC line. Also, there is no need for power factor improvement equipment in HVDC systems. Switching conditions The most critical switching device in the power system is the circuit breaker. Its function is to isolate the faulty section of power system in a short time for protection of rest of the system. The circuit breaker requires arc quenching abilities to achieve its function. The arc is typically extinguished based on the presence of zero currents. There are several zero crossings in a second in an AC current that provides various chances to stop the arc, whereas in DC system the current is fixed and there are no natural zero currents. So, in order to extinguish the arc, artificial zero currents are introduced in the system using particular circuitry. So, the HVDC breaker modeling is very complex as compared to HVAC breaker, hence the cost of HVDC breaker is very high as compared to the HVAC breaker. Distribution system On distribution side, in AC system, the voltage can be easily stepped up or stepped down with the help of transformer, which have high efficiency. However, in DC system, the only way to step down the voltage for distribution is through a motor generator set or a rotary converter, which is an inefficient process. Submarine power transmission Cables are used for submarine power transmission. Capacitance is generated between two conductors that operate in parallel arrangement or long distances. The capacitance value is based on variation in voltage levels. 
In AC systems, this variation in voltage occurs continuously, whereas in DC system, voltage variation only takes place during switching. Due to low capacitance effect, long distance submarine cables use HVDC technology. Short circuit currents In long HVAC transmission line, the short circuit current level is high at the receiving station, whereas HVDC system does not contribute to the short circuit current of the interconnected AC system. Controllability of power flow HVDC offers greater controllability as compared to HVAC system as it uses particular converters of IGBT semiconductors which can be switched on and off several times in a given period controlling the total system. Interference with communication lines Electromagnetic interference with nearby communication lines is higher in HVAC systems as compared to HVDC system. Interconnection of asynchronous systems in some regions, AC power grids are standardized for 50 Hz frequency, while in others for 60 Hz. Similarly, two different power arrangements may have same frequencies, but they may be out of phase. These types of systems are known as asynchronous systems. These power grids cannot be combined using a common AC interlink. However, as there is no frequency or phase in DC, so the interlink is possible in HVDC systems. The HVDC interlink converts AC with a specific frequency to DC with no frequency. After transmission through HVDC line, the receiving interlink at other end converts DC to AC with the required frequency. Length of transmission line We know that reactive power losses in a transmission line are directly related to the length of transmission line. Due to this reason, the length of HVAC transmission lines cannot be increased from a certain limit as the reactive power losses will be too much high then. This limit is generally around 500 km. On the other hand, due to the absence of inductance and capacitance, reactor power losses are absent in HVDC transmission line. That's why there is no limitation on length of HVDC transmission lines. So, the conclusion is that both HVAC and HVDC have their own advantages and disadvantages. The selection of HVAC or HVDC mode of power transmission depends on the particular requirements and the environment we are working in. Generally for transmission or very long distances and for bulk power, DC system is more suitable and cost effective, whereas for short and medium distance transmission and distribution side, AC system is preferred. Thanks for watching the video. Stay in touch for more informative videos.